Anglers and fish use different calendars. Anglers tend to think in terms of months and dates and to equate fish location and behavior to where, when, and how they've caught fish in years past. Fish, however, don't have calendars. Instead, they experience seasonal periods of fish response based on prevailing weather and water conditions. These are largely predictable, although their annual timing may vary from year to year. That's because in some years, spring arrives a few days earlier, some years a few weeks late, and other years, pretty much on time, depending on the prevailing weather conditions. For fish, this is no big deal. They simply respond in a predictable fashion to the existing conditions. Anglers, however, are often forced to rethink anticipated fish locations and patterns, and to get in tune with what's happening today, rather than to what occurred on the same date in fishing seasons gone by. Whenever fish aren't where you expect to find them according to the calendar, you're forced to locate them elsewhere. And in early spring, there's no better way to find and catch wayward smallmouths than slowly trolling the proper crankbaits to contact fish and make them bite. You know, the interesting thing is, is as we were saying earlier, a lot of guys are out here fishing right now and saying the fishing is really poor. <laughs> <laughs> I that's, disagree. Yeah, that's a mystery. Well, it's a beautiful spring morning and we're heading out on a trolling mission. And the target species today might surprise you. It's not the typical fish you'd expect us to be trolling for, but the conditions right now, it's been a very cold spring and most of the fish of all species haven't made their way up shallow yet. So we're targeting fish that are deep and biting, but they're not catchable in the shallows right now. So trolling is the way to go. I think you're gonna get a kick out of this. Ready, Jim? Yeah. As Jeremy stated, you'll get a kick out of what we're actually targeting, trolling. You know, in most trolling situations, you think walleyes or northern pike, muskies, but right now we're trolling for bass. And this is sort of interesting, it's sort of a, what you'd term as a snap trolling technique. You got that didn't one? take long? Boy, is that quick and easy, as yeah. soon as you get started. So this Whoop, is there, double doubled up. Oh, I just had one, I had another Keep one. Keep jerking it, I'll put it in neutral. But this, so this is so amazing. We were out here just a few days ago, and we came out casting jerk baits and thinking, you know, we'd maybe get a few fish, but the, the deal was, there was nothing up. We couldn't catch a fish casting. We caught one or two, but it was really, really slow. So I've done this technique before when the fish are deep and not really willing to move and chase a bait a lot. And we started doing doubles, 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 doubles. Like you couldn't believe where a lot of guys just are catching nothing. So it's really about depth control. And the thing with this trolling technique is we're able to get baits deep and hold them in the strike zone for an extended period of time. Something you just can't achieve with a cast, no matter how long of a cast it really is. I'll keep us going I here think a little you're bit, Kim, and hope you get here. I did have another one on, you know. I know you did. I yeah, saw you load up. <laughs> and it's a nice one. It took about, I don't know, maybe 45 seconds to get bit for the first time out here today. And I'm guessing that's how the day will progress. But one of the most interesting things is we were out this last weekend. Jeremy told me, we're just smoking them. We've caught 45, we've had eight double headers. I'm casting, dragging all different types of baits and not catching anything at all. And you'd go through these exact same areas out in this deeper water with tubes and grubs, drop shots, and you can't, ca we're not catching them. It's, it's just amazing. And Jeremy said the same thing. He, he'd turn around and go back in the, through these same areas and would not catch a fish. You come yeah. back trolling, and that's what you, you Boom. get. Yeah. Lots of them. There you go, bud. That'll be good. And the bait we're using right now is a deep diving x -rap. It For me, the best bait in cold water for smallmouths is a jerk bait. I've got the most confidence in a jerk bait, hands down. But the thing is, if you're fishing like a standard x wrap or your standard jerk bait, you can't get the bait deep enough. So this deep bill, this happens to be an x wrap deep eight, is just perfect for getting down to where the fish live and staying in there. And this is simple. I cast it out, put the motor in gear, start snapping along. You know, one thing about 
jerkbait fishing like this is figuring out the distance the fish are willing to travel to hit a bait. Right now we're in really cold water conditions. It's 47 degrees and uh, the fish, you have to get the bait down really close to them. They have a real short strike zone. So what we're doing with this trolling technique is being able to position, get the baits first off down there. You know, when you make a cast, actually, the cast is really, you only get that bait to depth for a real short period of time. This way we can get the baits into not only deeper water, but keep them down there for a longer extended uh, period of time. Throughout the summer months when the water is warmer, you know, a lot of times we are using these exact same baits or shallow lip baits and the fish will travel vertically, you know, eight foot to hit a lure. Right now, that's not the case. The real key is being able to get the baits deeper because the fish aren't willing to move that far to hit a bait. Within the next minute, I said it was actually within the next 10 seconds. <laughs> and, you, and you got pinky on. Yep, I got, uh, I got other bright colored ones too if you want. I know, I, I brought a bob. Whitey's, I'm already not sold with Whitey, I'm going to clown. Yep. Oh, there he is. Hey, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat boy, you can't get none of this. Look at me. I got moves. I go left, I go right, I go left again. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Oh, there it is. Psych! <laughs> I'm so erratic, I don't even know where I'm going. Come on, Chubby Chief. Come on, come on, Bucket Bob. Come on, come get some of this. I can do this all day long. <laughs> Look at me, watch this. Come on, come on. Your mama's so fat that she can't get out the fish net. Ow! All right, I'll give you that one. with the swinging rugby jig. I know what to do, thanks. It's articulated, swinging head. Let soft plastics move naturally and freely. I know, I designed it. Plus, it's got that extra long Z-Bend hook that you love. And oh, it's got nice. the... oh, God! Hey, little help here? Oops, I'm sorry. Did you say something? Come on, help me. Turn this bag over. For years, they've quietly taken you where the fish are. But now the silence is about to break. With the incredible new iPilot Link, your Minn Kota and Hummingbird can communicate with each other. So you can hold on a spot like an electronic anchor, record and return to waypoints and paths, follow any Lake Master depth contour, and more, all automatically and all from your Hummingbird or the Link remote. They talk, and you'll be speechless. Closed captioning provided by Seafoam Motor Treatment. So my system right now is just something that you'd use for walleye live bait rigging. This is a seven foot quantum smoke, medium action, and I've got it spooled up with the, this is the Acurus PT reel, 25 size, I've got 10 pound braid on here. And a lot of guys like to troll mono, you know, because of the stretch in it. Well, I just compensate instead of using mono. I, I just personally like braid and I get the baits deeper, but you can hear my drag clicking a lot of times as I'm reeling. So I'm just running a really loose drag and that really seems to be extremely effective for getting the baits deep. You can feel when fish are swinging at it and uh, just a nice loose drag and a long soft rod, you lose very, very few fish to it. And they're just another average fish. There we go, buddy. <laughs> it's a good time. Net? I can just grab this one, Jim, no big deal. Are you sure about that? I'd be careful about, about that. I was on the striper mission recently, which I had an X-Rap impaled through the top of my hand. One, two, Oof. Three. I'm fishing barbless. You go through so many fish at this point in time too, that uh, you know you can, you can certainly fish with barbs, but you catch so many fish, to me, it's just a tip for the health of the fish. You'd be surprised at how few fish you lose. Fishing in Canada for pike, walleyes, all that stuff, you pinch the barbs down, you go through so many fish in a day, it makes it easier for taking fish off. And like Jim just said, if you get hooked, then it's a real piece of cake to get the, <laughs> yeah. get the hooks out, which is a likely scenario with smallmouth and treble hooks. You know, Jeremy has already been, been working me over 
He's gotten two. I'm going to a brighter colored bait. We're going to clown. We're really fishing super. This is really clear water. And for smallmouth bass, you wouldn't believe. You know, Jeremy's got a pink one on. I'm using a clown colored one. These really bright shock or attractor colors can be really hot for smallmouth bass. You know, in so many cases, people say, well, you got really clear water, go to natural colored finishes. In our experience, I'd go the other, the other direction. <laughs> we use a lot of really brilliantly colored baits. Fire tiger. Clown, pink, pink. hothead. Yeah. The X-Rap 8 that we're fishing right now, X-Rap 8 deep, is uh, running about seven feet a cast length back on 10 pound, 832 10 pound braid with a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. So I know that just because if I get up into seven, my bait will touch. And I don't want a bait that's running too deep that's constantly in contact with the bottom. This lake has a ton of zebra mussels in it. So when you're constantly banging bottom or hitting that bottom, you'll see that leader gets really nicked up. But as long as I'm within, you know, waist deep of the bottom, the fish are, seem to be willing to come up to hit it. Much further than that though, and you're totally out of the strike zone. Got him. Got him. Got him, Jimmy. Got him. Got another one. <laughs> Perfect. Doubled up. Yeah. Doubled up. That's what we're talking about. This is a good hole. I think we found it. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know you if got I, a better one? I don't think I got a better one. Well, it's hard to say you got that boat going, you know, a little bit in gear. And, I don't know if I got ways. a bass I got, or if this is a big walleye. Big walleye? Yeah. I got a regular bass. If it's a bass, it's a good one. Let's hope it's one of those fabled seven pounders. <laughs> I would like to catch me at seven. They're just so fat this time of year. Just awesome. This fat says, huh? Look at that. He had a mouthful of X-Rap. Mouthful of X-Rap. that off. I have to get a net for Jimmy's here. Yeah. Yo, oh, look at that. I got a, I got a real whopper. Oh, stopper. he's got a big one. Jim's got a real big one. I'm going to get the net. No, do you know what? I got him. He was, wow, that is a big one. It is a nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He got him on top of the head. That's why yeah, it feels that's so That's why it feels so good. That's that. a big Boy, bass. A beautiful fish. Swung yeah. at it. Yeah, there we go. If I can get that guy out of there. There you go. You know, right now, these fish are actually, uh, here, I'll get that out of there. These fish are just coming in to spawn like in the next couple of weeks. We've really had a just a really abnormal year. It's been extraordinarily cold. And these fish have are sort of staged up right before they go into the flats where they're gonna spawn in the next couple of weeks. But the way the temperature has been, the fish wanna come in, but the temperature's not letting them come in. We'll see. The thing is, is what you have on these spots, these transitional spots leading up onto these big spawning flats, you have large groups of fish. I mean, these, in some of these places, I'm sure there's, you know, if not 50 to 100 fish on some of these spots. If this was a normal year, we, I mean, of course, we'd be up fishing, you know, that four to six, eight feet of water casting. But it's, like Jim said, it's been an abnormally cold year. And the fish are, are quite a bit deeper. But the ticket to finding them really is uh, I use a feature on my hummingbird fish finder here and it's depth highlight. So most of the fish we're finding are in that eight to 12 foot of water right now, maybe as much as 13, but I set my depth highlight to that range. So that just sticks all the likely spots out on the map. So I can see anywhere where there's eight to 12 feet of water on the lake. And then from there, you really need to fine tune it with your sonar. So I'll go to those areas, but not all the areas in eight to 12 feet are good, of course. You're looking for the areas that have the biggest boulders, that big giant rock, really seems like that's the ticket for these cold water bass. That's the available cover for them, and that's what they really seem to prefer to be on. So it's a pretty easy system. Go look for areas, maybe it's a point or an inside corner in that depth zone that you're targeting. And then from there, you just simply drive around with your sonar and you look for the big boulders. When you see the boulders, most likely there's fish. And these smallmouth are so inactive that a lot of times you won't even see them on sonar. They're just simply hanging right on the bottom or right next to the rocks or tucked in the little crevices. So because you, fit, you see an area that doesn't look like it has fish, it doesn't mean they're not there. If you see the right cover and big boulders, that's most likely where you're going to catch the fish. There he 
is. Another one. Another one. You sort of really, really slowed down there. There, you kicked it out. And yeah. That's the whole deal with this too, is I'm not running the motor in gear all the time. I'm constantly coming in and out of gear and it's just, look at the engine almost like you're real. So you're just using the engine kind of to pick up slack and then you kill it and you kind of work it and feed the bait slack. So it's just a matter of in, out, in, out, in, out. And that's really all there is to it. Oh, look at that, he puked up a perch. Check it. Okay, there's the, there's the X-Rap. That's what he's puking up. Huh? Fish eater. Smallmouth. Well, he's a fat boy. Yeah, nice fat, so he's a little lighter now that he lost that. Yeah. He lost that perch. He'll have another one, maybe. Yep. Mercury engine test. Fuel efficiency you can rely on. It's good to have mercury behind you. It's time to put a new spin on innovation and touch off a revolution. It's time to push boundaries and leave our mark on the world. It's time to say goodbye to excuses, limitations, and half measures. It's time to get it together. New Onyx with Crosstouch. Now, everything you can do with a touch screen, you can also do with a touchpad. Only from Hummingbird. All fishermen are created equal. Some just use better fishing line. Speed and acceleration you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. I've got this boat probably in neutral as much as I've got it in gear right now. You know, I'm just really going along slow. My depth finders read between between a half and a mile an hour you know, half a mile to one mile an hour, and that just lets me just jerk that bait, just like if you were casting a jerk bait. Twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause. Oop. And the whole ticket is being able to let that bait sit at rest. If you're going so fast that when you pause it, the bait's still moving forward, you're not gonna catch fish. It's all about real slow and just letting that bait hang. Cold water, long pauses. You can see a lot of times I'll, I'll bring my rod forward, I'll just keep slacking it and just keep following it back. And many times you'll just go to pull forward again and the fish is just on it. Forty-five degree water, these boys are pretty inactive. Most bass anglers, when you say forty-five degree water, they say, I don't like it. <laughs> there he is. Got him. Just saying we should go. There's still some here. That's so fun. I mean, it just surprises the heck out of you. Just like, jerk, Drink. jerk, and all of a sudden, oh, it's heavy. I'll keep us going here a little bit, Jim, so hopefully we can double I, up. I wish I could, doubles. I could catch one. Seven-year-olds can catch them, and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. Coming up. But just going easy with them, too, when you get when you get bit on this system too, like don't set the hook. Once you come back, you're loaded, the boat is moving, you got this braided line there. I mean they're hooked up, so then it's just a matter of just going nice and easy with them. Oh, yeah. 
Nice and easy. Nice and easy. What do we got here? Oh, another nice one. They're all just so nice. The quality of fish is just amazing. It's a big one there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at he he wanted it. He got both hooks. I like the ones that get both hooks. Those are the good ones. He's cold, but he'll still wallow. He'll still say I'll make an attempt at jumping. Look at that. Look at how fat this thing is. Just crazy. Crazy fat, so. Oh, look at the belly on this thing. Look at that. <laughs> huh? He had a good winter. The thing's not even that long, but it's just a toad. Jeez. <laughs> Ooh. Get her? Yep. We're always looking for a secret to success, like lures, lakes, spots. Here's one mechanics have been using for decades to solve fuel system problems. It's seafoam motor treatment. Seafoam helps do the few important things exceptionally well. Removes harmful engine deposits, controls moisture, stabilizes fuel for up to two years, and adds lubrication to fuel, so engines run cooler and last longer. To me, this stuff is like a miracle in a can. In fishing, nothing beats the confidence and enjoyment that comes with using the best equipment. There's a reason why generations of professional anglers, guides, and camp operators make Lund their boat of choice. They stand up to the elements and the repeated use that hardcore anglers put them through, season after season. They're guide-tested, wilderness-proven. Isn't it time for you to experience the Lund difference? There's no place like this. I can't believe it, and it's huge. From fast-breaking techniques to hot new products, log on to lindnermedia.com to help you stay on the fish and on the bite. View uninterrupted episodes of Angling Edge TV. Order from our complete library of species-specific DVDs. Purchase the same tackling gear our staff uses to catch fish on TV. We have fun facts to test your fishing knowledge and inspirational themes to help keep you on the leading edge of life's challenges. Steer your next cast on the web to lindnermedia.com and get ready to set the hook. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. So check this out with the big tiller handle. I get her going, I got my tilt and trim. I can do whatever I want on a big run like this. The hydraulics just lock it in place. It's beautiful. And then when I want to steer, I go like this. Ooh, Got him. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh mm. boy. Ooh. Get her? Yep. One thing nice about that really bright colored 832, you know, we got that piece of floral carbon on it, but the nice thing is about that because we're sort of slacklining when you're sort of snapping it, and then you're a lot of times you're giving it just slack line and you actually see that bright colored line all of a sudden jump. <laughs> it's a, oh, oh, I just missed a double. No. Oh. That's a nice one too, yeah, John. Another a great big one. Oh. Yeah, it is another toad. Jeez. Oh, doubled up, doubled up. Yeah. Oh, come up. here, How buddy. do you like this action? This is a good time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know, we happen to be fishing for smallmouth bass, but we've actually used this almost exact uh, same technique for alternate species of fish. We use this a lot for muskies, uh, short line trolling using uh, minnow baits and jerk baits. I remember, and Jim, the first time I saw this technique, it was an in fisherman video where you guys were pulling suics or bobbies. <laughs> Not for on muskies, the same lake for muskies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Look at the size of that one there. I, I might even have you beat. Do, do, really? Yeah, I got a big donkey. <laughs> oh, look at that guy there. Oh, look at that beautiful brown bass. Holy mackerel. Oh, let's get a double shot here. <laughs> look at that one there. And Jeez he, Louise. You know, the, the interesting thing is, is as we were saying earlier, a lot of guys are out here fishing right now and saying the fishing is really poor. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. Yeah, that's a mystery. <laughs> the thing is presentation. That's so many different th things about angling. Little subtleties in presentation makes a tremendous difference on the number of fish you catch. Man, that's really, a good double. <laughs> really, huh? Let's get them back. Salute. Hey, this is the lead article in my hometown paper in a sports edition. Headline, Minnesota Fishing Challenge Nets Big Bucks. I've been very involved in Minnesota Teen and Adult Challenge and this is one of the major fundraisers for them, the Minnesota Fishing Challenge. Let me read you a couple stats in here. Fishing results were impressive, but the pre-tournament fundraising efforts of the 115 teams set all-time records. Highlighted by the Cloquet team of Richard Brummer and Stuart Nelson with a record $44,800 raised teams turned in more than $215,000. Jeremy Smith, Baxter, and Brian Miller, Eden Prairie, raised $28,000 for second place. By the way, that's Jeremy Smith that you see on this television show. We work together. Sam Anderson, Invergrove Heights, worked with sons Zach and Max, were in third place fundraising with $13,000. Dean and Mike Plymer from Breezy Point raised $9,000 for fourth place. Then it, gets, it goes over the different categories of who won what where for the size fish. Closing paragraph, the mission of Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge is to assist teens and adults to gain freedom from chemical addictions and other life controlling problems by addressing their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. In the six years that I was involved in this event, I learned something. For a couple years before Teen Challenge became a reality here. I had a tugging in my heart to do a tournament similar to this with churches all over the state of Minnesota. It ended up being the Minnesota Fishing Challenge. What I learned is that when God lays something on your heart and it keeps coming up in your mind and you keep thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it, he's got a plan and he wants you to be a part of that plan. It can be and is life-changing. Again, when God lays something on your heart and you keep thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it, he's got a plan, a big plan, and he wants you to be a part of it. What a great blessing it is. All you have to do is step out and have the courage to act on it. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, you have a great safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.